Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the content patch for the 26th of Feb 2013. My name is Total Biscuit with today's gaming news and comments. Coming up in the show, Diablo 3 will have offline mode on PlayStation 3 and 4, but will not be supporting cross-platform play. Free DLC for Natural Selection 2 to be released on the 28th of February. The War Z shambles back onto Steam, and we have some gameplay footage from Command & Conquer Generals 2, courtesy of VG247. When Chris Metzen got up on stage at the PlayStation 4 launch event, a lot of people's hearts skipped a beat. Indeed, Twitter went crazy at that point and it didn't take long for it to be immediately disappointing as Chris announced Diablo 3 for both PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4. It was known for a while that there were possibilities of this game actually making it to console. Some had even argued that some of the changes made to Diablo 3 in comparison to the original games were done specifically to allow for that transition. However, we do now know a little bit more in terms of what this game will actually provide, or more accurately, what it won't provide. So, first things first, the game will not support PC to PlayStation Play. This is not exactly a surprise, but it does confirm a number of different things. Speaking on the official forums, community manager Viflair said that while we think cross-platform play would be awesome, there are currently no plans to allow connectivity between PlayStation Network and Battle.net. As a result, the characters in your Battle.net account and PlayStation account will also remain separate. Now, this is interesting because after the press conference, they also confirmed that the console version of this game will have an offline mode and will also have up to four players split screen or more accurately, on the same screen, which is a much more interesting notion. Now, the reason this is all interesting is because it leads me to one very specific conclusion, that being that there will be no real money auction house in the console version of Diablo 3. What this also means is that, for the first time, Blizzard has released a console game, and more to the point, it will be superior to the actual PC version because it does not, in fact, have the real money auction house and does not, in fact, require always online play, which can lead to all sorts of problems, including lag in a single-player game. In fact, I shouldn't even say single-player because technically the game doesn't have a single-player, it's just got a lobby whereby you're playing on your own. Having experienced lag in Diablo 3, thinking, oh, this would be a great game to play on the train on the way down to London one time, and then had the game be basically completely unplayable, including on the train's Wi-Fi and on my 3G connection, I came to the conclusion that this game was not for me. <laughs> now, this kind of derails the whole point that... The always on mode wasn't just for DRM. You know, this is something that Blizzard has been pushing for a while, saying, oh, well, the entire game's built around the notion that you have to be online. It's not consumer punishing DRM. Honest. Well, it clearly is. And the reason that, of course, you can come to that conclusion now is the fact that it, it, it is not in the console version. And, of course, as we are well aware, there is less of a piracy problem on console than there is on PC. So you don't need to be always online for this thing. And it does also come to the conclusion that there probably won't be a real money auction house. It doesn't surprise me. It would be very weird to do that. It would be very surprising if Sony allowed it, considering that pretty much all of the transactions that are done on a PlayStation system are done through the PlayStation Store, not through third-party applications. So, once again, not really a big surprise, but what I've got to say is it's just incredibly sad that people that want the best version of the game are going to have to go to console to get it when Blizzard has been, for how many decades now, a PC-exclusive developer. I am well aware that stuff like Blackthorn and Rock and Roll Racing and Lost Vikings were console games, but ever since their big three franchises started rolling, this developer has been exclusively PC, and it's going to be hard, I think, to explain to gamers that are feeling very much put out by this that really this whole always on DRM and this real money auction house was just for their benefit and that it didn't somehow absolutely cripple the game in terms of the way that it was designed. Indeed, early on in the game's life cycle, it was very easy to see the kind of damage that had been done to the game as a result of the balancing in the hardest difficulty mode, essentially requiring you to buy very specific sets of gear off the auction house in order to survive. There have been some changes made in that regard, but some would argue it is too little too late. The real money auction house was a great influence on the actual design process behind the game and negatively impacted it in general. So 
Ah, it's, it's a sad state of affairs, is it not? But, you know, funnily enough, Diablo 3 is probably going to be reasonably enjoyable on console. They're adding some new stuff. There's going to be an evade move, which I know is, is a very, very odd thing indeed. But because you have less precise control, it is apparently required. This is going to end up being, as far as I can tell, a more sort of Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance style of game. And without the real money auction house, the ability to play four players on the same machine... I've got to say, this actually looks kind of fun <laughs> in certain respects. So it's it's really sad, really sad that we've gotten to this state. Oh man, what a mess. Alright, let's do something positive since you guys are probably getting horribly depressed already. So this is good news for those of you who have enjoyed or are considering getting the game Natural Selection 2, the asymmetrical sci-fi FPS and it is that there is a new update coming, and it is considered free DLC in the form of the Gorgeous update, which consists of railguns, gorge tunnels, and a whole bunch of other stuff. It is absolutely loaded with content, and it is going to be free. Unknown Worlds also claims that they've made some significant changes which have allowed the Spark engine, which is their proprietary engine, to run significantly better. This should be really good news for those of you who had performance issues in the game. And they also went on to say that these days it is rare for PC games to receive expansion style content updates for free. Season passes, map packs and DLC are the norm. We're proud that Gorgeous is breaking the norm. It's hard to complain really, isn't it? You know, it sounds like a really nice set of updates, honestly. I don't necessarily think that, quite frankly, it is as much of a big deal as they're claiming it to be. I know this is p obvious PR. And I totally get why they're doing it. It's good to be able to grab the community in that respect and say, hey, we're here for you. We're not just out to rip you off and so on and so forth. So that's a nice little PR trick. But let's be honest, a lot of multiplayer games do get free updates because it is designed to keep the community healthy. It's much, much more important. When you don't have a huge game like Call of Duty or Battlefield that can get away with that stuff, yeah, you will often release free content updates because... It will keep the community healthy. If the community dies, you're done. You can't sell any more copies of that game. The word will get out that there's no one playing it anymore and no one's going to pick that game up. So it does make a reasonable degree of business sense. I'm glad to hear about the upgrades and improvements to the engine. It seems like optimization was needed for a lot of people. Personally, when I played the game, I had no problems, but considering the machine that I'm running on, that's not really a huge surprise. So you can check that one out on the 28th of Feb. That's when the update is dropping for Natural Selection 2, and that's going to update automatically on Steam just like everything else. Speaking of Steam, the War Z having been taken down in a storm of controversy by Valve in order to quote work with Hammerpoint Interactive to improve the game has now popped right back up on Steam and is available for sale once again. Now, the question is what has happened? If we go to the store page, what we will see is there's been a couple of changes. Like, for one thing, they changed the banner because they stole artwork from The Walking Dead and just sketched over it. So they had to change that. What else did they do? Well, they changed the description, so it's no longer inaccurate, and as a result, is a hell of a lot shorter, I must say. So let's look at a few of the changes to the description. Well, let's just say this. They have changed the fact that they said there's between 100 and 400 square kilometers of play area. It's now just a huge persistent world. The War Z is a non-linear open world game. That, that's all they said. They actually added the term non-linear into it, which I assume is meant to imply that there's no story or questing or anything in that whatsoever. What else did they change? Well, they said they got rid of hundreds of servers to play on because one assumes that there aren't really all that many anymore. They got rid of the whole you can rent and create public or private servers allocating spots for friends or clans. That's been gotten rid of, although they have put down in key features create your own clans. Uh, there's nothing else in terms of getting your own server and allowing your friends to play on it and things like that in the description now. Group with other players to increase your chances of survival. This is not a feature, but hey, it's in the description right now. Create your own survival campaign. Gain experience points and spend it to learn dozens of available skills. That's been removed because that wasn't in the game at all. There wasn't, in fact, a skill system that's never actually been implemented. 
They are still saying that there are two modes of play, normal and hardcore, even though there is actually no difference between the two whatsoever, simply because when you die, you lose all your gear, and since there's no skill system and no experience, there is literally no point in playing hardcore over normal because it has exactly the same effect. They also removed the part of the description that says up to 100 players per game server, and they removed the part about single purchase, downloadable client with the ability to play the full game without subscriptions or requiring in-game transactions. That's now gone from the description, which funnily enough, that was actually true, but you did get kind of shafted as a result of not taking part in the transaction system. However, while there are some definite description changes, and these are easily huge improvements, what they haven't done is mention that this game is clearly not finished, that it is very much still in either alpha or beta, that is not mentioned anywhere on the Steam page, and they still have the same screenshots, which were proven false, I might add. These are what are called in the industry bull shots. They are designed to make the game look better than it really is. There are a couple of examples. There's two guys running from a huge horde of zombies on a highway. There is no way that that would ever happen in the game because there's never enough zombies in an area for that to occur. And then secondly, a massive number of zombies. I believe it was more than 75 zombies on the screen looking up towards the player as well as a shot whereby the player appears to have an M4 with an extended magazine who is gunning down a bunch of zombies in a city and there are, once again, nowhere near that many zombies at any point in the game ever. So, not to mention the fact that the game doesn't look anywhere near as good as it claims in the screenshots, it is still false advertising. The fact that Steam actually allowed this to come back is ridiculous, and I've got to say, I'm pretty disappointed in Valve. Yeah, taking it off Steam seems like very much a PR move, yeah? It also seems responsible, don't get me wrong, and they did offer refunds, so... Definitely two thumbs up to Valve there, but there is still a level of responsibility that a retail store has to take in order to be allowed to sell stuff to you. Maybe it's just because I'm from the UK. In the UK, we're protected by certain acts like the Sale of Goods Act that says that the point of complaint and the point of refund is the retailer. Yeah, The retailer is responsible for what's on their shelves, and then they take it up the chain to the manufacturer. You don't have to send most products directly back to the manufacturer. You deal with the retailer where you bought it. So what will generally happen is that if there is false advertising going on, the store will take responsibility and remove it from the shelves, and then they take it up with the manufacturer. So far, so good, right? For Valve, that's exactly what they did. However, they've put it back on Steam, and they don't tell you that this game is clearly nowhere near finished. They don't tell you that this game was previously removed, and they don't tell you that these screenshots are flagrantly false. And that, to me, is still irresponsible. You can put up bad games on Steam. It's not Valve's responsibility to make sure that every game on Steam is good. That is not the retailer's responsibility. It never has been. It never should be. That's an absurd idea. But it is their responsibility to make sure that there's no false advertising being put in play. And these screenshots are false advertising. There is also the implication that this is a finished product because it has been released on Steam and there is no mention whatsoever of it being in alpha or beta. And yet that too has not been mentioned. It is... I don't think this is the right time to bring it back. I don't know why they've decided that it's a good idea now. People have certainly not forgotten about the War Z and the ridiculous nature of its so-called Steam launch. And this is going to cause them a whole new bunch of controversy. Unfortunate. As I said, I think Valve went a good way towards taking responsibility as a retailer, but I don't think they've gone quite far enough. This game is still a mess, and it still should not be on Steam. And finally, after a significant period of silence from developers Bioware Victory and, of course, publisher EA Games on the subject of Command & Conquer Generals 2, we have a gameplay reveal with some reasonably significant amount of footage involved in it, as well as an interview with one of the lead designers. And this comes courtesy of VG247. Please do check out their website as well as their channel. This is from the channel Mr. VG247. This is, of course, their footage that's going on in the background. It's vitally important that you do watch that because then you'll actually get the developer commentary. But what is it showing? Well, it shows a number of different pieces of footage involving the actual units within the game. It shows the EU faction, which is more of a high-tech faction 
bit of a melding, I suppose, between GDI and the old US faction on Command and Conquer Generals, as well as the return of the Global Liberation Army, the GLA, which are very much the kind of terrorist ragtag faction based on hit-and-run strategy and guerrilla tactics and so on and so forth. It does show the return of the Angry Mob, which is probably a huge deal for anyone that really enjoyed Command and Conquer Generals. They did talk a little bit about their business model, so... What they said was they would be releasing the game for free. We have known for a while this is going to be a free-to-play game, which was very disappointing to a lot of people who were hoping for a full boxed release with a full campaign. But what we also now know is that they'll be releasing a set of generals for free, and then you will be unlocking or buying different generals. What this probably means, based on the original Command & Conquer generals and Zero Hour, is that you will be getting different units or variants of units based on your general choice. For instance, in Command & Conquer General Zero Hour, there were actually 12 different factions based on three main races within the game. And you had stuff like the Laser General, who he had the same tank as the other generals, but this one had a laser turret on it, which made certain differences as to how it would perform. And there was a whole bunch of different changes like that. There were minor variations or just thematic differences between the units. And that in itself was quite the thing. I very much enjoyed that. I thought that had a huge amount of variety to the game. So if they're keep keeping that, that's good. What's not so good is the fact that they might very well be entering a situation where you could find this buying power idea. I've got to say this, Zero Hour Wild Fun was definitely not a balanced game by any stretch of the imagination. It was actually horrible in terms of balance. Early on, the Air General was super overpowered. Super Weapon General had some problems as well. There were all sorts of different things going on. And unfortunately, that meant that the competitive side of that game was stifled to some degree. However, there is the possibility that they don't screw up the balance, in which case it's actually fine. All right, so you unlock or buy variant generals based on the existing ones that you get for free. That's okay if they balance it. The risk is they probably won't be able to. It's very unlikely. RTS balance is definitely a dangerous thing indeed. And unless it happens to be based on team-based combat, which once again is kind of unlikely. Generals, which was traditionally a 1v1 game, even though it had FFA and I think up to something like what was it? Four? I believe you could actually go up all the way up to 12 players or something like that. I know 4 on 4 was definitely a format that worked in that game. Then you're going to run into balance problems. If you face off against someone that's bought a variant general, which you don't have, that happens at that point in the metagame to be more powerful than you, then nothing's going to stop that. It's not like League of Legends where, okay, someone picks the flavor of the month hero, you can still win because the rest of your team can gank that hero, you can do things against it. In a 1v1 situation, it's very difficult to actually sort that balance out. I'm also very concerned about the fact that there were very few mentions of single player. It looks like they're going to launch with multiplayer only, which is a kick in the teeth for any of us that love the CNC single player campaigns and that they will be adding campaign stuff later on. What did interest me is that they said they may venture into the Tiberium and Red Alert universes. That's kind of huge. So it seems like the fact that this is called Command and Conquer, this may very well be an actual, in fact, this, they said this, this is a service platform rather than just Command & Conquer Generals 2, and that this could be the future of CNC going forward for the next however many years. Potentially, that's a good thing. I mean, it looks like it's on a nice engine. I love the destruction. This was something that CNC Generals 1 did really well. The weapons felt really, really powerful. Stuff exploded in a really satisfying way, which is something that the other CNC games generally didn't do. And it looks nice. It looks like it's got good fidelity. They haven't overdone it, but it looks slick. It could be a good thing, potentially. Yeah, to have this platform which allows them to make CNC games all based on this one engine and to create regular content. This is potentially good, but also is potentially devastating. This is the problem with free to play. It can go really, really right, or it can go really, really wrong. And honestly, I still would have preferred just to see a full boxed version, another Command & Conquer game that I could buy in a box that I could actually play. Because the last one we had was CNC 4 and it was a goddamn disaster. All right, folks, there you go. That is me done for the day. Thank you very much for watching the content patch, and I'll see you next time.